Okay, everybody. I will. Uh, I won't keep you any longer than you've already been kept. Um, I know you've all got busy, busy schedules. Um, I guess thank you, everyone, for coming down to the boat folks stand this morning. It's lovely to see so many new faces and old faces. Um, it's actually good weather, which is a bit of a surprise. Um, we have a very, very exciting panel with me today. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Dominic, I'm the directors at Boat Folk. Um, I've got Richard Percy, uh, CEO of the Andrew Simpson Foundation. I've got with me Ellie Jennings, who is a lecturer in sports coaching at Bournemouth University. Obviously, probably goes without saying, I've got Ailey McIntyre, um, Olympic gold medalist at the Tokyo Olympics. And we're joined by our very first youth ambassador for the initiative I'm about to launch, um, Tim Long, who last year became the youngest person to solo sail around Britain and is on a very, very swift path to, uh, to success. So, we wanted to bring you here today to basically introduce you to a new initiative clearly brought to you by Boat Folk and the Andrew Simpson Foundation. And I guess where this has all come from is ultimately from a shared passion. And that's, you know, essentially a passion that both Boat Folk and the Andrew Simpson Foundation have long shared, which is to get as many people on the water as possible. Um, you know, we all know that uh, the sailing demographic and the boating demographic is an aging one. Um, it's something that is sort of the elephant in the room of the industry. And I guess what we're looking to achieve is a breakthrough of that and to try and encourage a new generation of voters to enter into our industry. Um, we are an island nation. It's slightly shameful that there aren't more voters in the uh, younger demographic, so we're trying to reverse that. So what's the situation? I mean, I guess the point is that being on the water, sailing, boating, has amazing benefits for young people, um, whether it's improved well-being, whether it's you know just learning new skills, whether it's new opportunities for employment. There are just so many benefits for being on the water. Um, and generally, what we know among both folk, Andrew Simpson Foundation and the industry as a whole is that there are so many barriers to entry um, for getting into the sport, whether that's a lack of awareness of boating, there's preconceptions about voting. I, it's not for me, I'm not privileged, so why would I vote? Um, low confidence, lack of understanding and support from peers or parents. You know, we know that in the past, voting has been a passion that has been passed down generation to generation, but that's become quite diluted in recent years. And what we're seeing is that actually people just aren't sharing that passion with the younger generations and their families. So we're trying to look for a new audience that we can inspire to get on the water. And obviously cost is a big thing. Cost is something that um, every boater struggles with on a daily basis. Um, but it is a barrier to entry, particularly for young people, as well as proximity to you know, a gateway to the water. So what are we doing? Ultimately, we are creating new gateways to boating for young people. We're trying to harness the power of Boat Folk and the Andrew Simpson Foundation um, to provide as many opportunities as possible for young people to get on the water. Um, these are our two missions condensed down very neatly. Our mission at Boat Folk is to create great places for anyone that wants to get on the water, by the water or under the water. Um, and clearly the Andrew Simpson Foundation have an amazing mission around transforming lives through sailing. So by bringing those two missions together, we're hoping that we can create a new generation of boater. And introducing Boat Gen. This is the initiative that we're launching today. It is a campaign and movement that we're launching to the market as of today, essentially, um, that is looking to build our new boating generation. Ideally, what we're trying to do is ignite a passion for boating in the UK's youth. Um, we know that there are existing boaters that, um, you know, 
go out at the weekends, spend time with friends and family on boats, but they don't necessarily identify themselves as a boater. It's just something that they do. What we want to achieve is this celebration and pride in the fact that they are one of the UK's boating generation. Um, the ways that we're doing this, ultimately, there are a couple of different methods. We're giving experienced young boaters like Tim a platform to share their passion, their story, and to inspire others um, to get on the water. We're working with boats people like Tim and Amy Lee um, to, to hopefully just share that um, knowledge with others and to ultimately build a community, both online and offline, um, of young boaters around the UK. Importantly, what we're also going to be delivering is a support mechanism for young boaters or young people that have not yet tried boating to get on the water. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, and then ultimately we're using participation events and activities across all of the boat folk marinas, all of the Andrew Simpson centres, um, to provide those opportunities for getting afloat. So ultimately, we'll be launching with this film, essentially, next week to um, the entire UK young demographic, ultimately. Um, it'll be pushed out across social um, and pushed out through our own networks with local school, schools and organisations that, that reach young people. And the aim is to both get people that are like Tim, young boaters that already have that passion to celebrate it, join the boating generation and to share their passion with others. But also we're aiming to reach a whole new demographic. We're in talks with organisations like the Gosport and Fair and um, Multi Academy about getting other people that have not had any interest in boating for really exploring whether this is a skill or a passion for them. And so the kind of things that we'll be delivering for those not yet boaters or the water lovers that are curious about it, um, we have, I can't even see what I've got on the screen, but we've got sailing experience days. So we're starting with our first sailing experience day that's been booked in for the 10th of October at the Portsmouth Andrew Simpson Centre. Um, essentially that is a free opportunity for any young person in the local area to come down to the centre and try out any access um, to water sport. So that might be messing around on dinghies, it might be paddle boarding, it might be kayaking, you know, we've got the kit, we've got the space, we're just giving them the opportunities without any barriers to come and try it out. We're then going to be putting on um, things like the Pop Up Boat Club, which is essentially our vision is to have a roving keelboat club that goes around the country putting on events and participation events for the local communities around all of the boat boat marinas and around all of the Andrew Simpson centres so that we're giving tangible opportunities for people to get on the water um, and we'll be pushing that again through online methods through social but also by reaching out to the local schools and the local clubs in our area so that we can really um, tap into the local community. We've then got get a float days. You know, we recognise that not everyone wants to just jump straight on a boat and mess around on it. There is a gradual learning curve for, for many and you know we will be looking at putting on days that are a bit more entry level, so using paddle boards or kayaks or, or any other sort of slightly more entry level um, sporting equipment to get them on the water. And then a really big important part is our sort of careers mentoring and pathways. So one of the main imperatives for Boat Gen is that every child that comes through the Boat Gen framework is nurtured on the pathway that's right for them. So whether that is messing around on boats and they just want to be a leisure boater and, and that's that, that's fine. Whether they want to do it once and never touch it again, that's also fine. But if they've got a passion for pursuing a career in performance racing or if they want to become a boat builder or if they want to work in a marina, um, we're going to be nurturing them on those journeys using the Andrew Simpson Foundation pathways that are already established and d developing them further. So it's not just a bunch of events around the country that happen once and then nothing happens again. 
every child will be nurtured and the aim is to get a thousand children in the first year through the boat gen um, pathway and, and we'll see where we get to. So that's boat gen. I've always got an amazing panel of people with me today and I want to stop talking and pass over to them. So really this is an opportunity for you to ask any questions about the initiative or any questions to any of them about anything else. <laughs> Um, so do we have anything that anyone wants to ask, or I can direct some prompted questions to them? Oh, I've got two. Who had their hand up first? Go on then. Richard, actually. Um, we've seen quite a change, a shift of behaviour of existing voters in the last couple of years, especially in the last 18 months. Has this resulted in the fears that you've seen an uptick in participation in voting? Obviously 2020 was interesting, uh, so uh, take that aside. Um, in fact, well, let's go back there. Actually, whilst um, we had a very sort of turbulent year when we could operate, it was phenomenal. Um, I honestly haven't seen participation like it, to be honest. Um, then we clearly closed down again, um, and then from the moment we opened in April, um, it has been through the roof. Um, now, is the question in my mind, is that because people can't go anywhere or are reluctant to go abroad? Um, I actually don't think so. I think people are really starting to see the benefits of outdoor activities, and I think that organisations like ours can really capitalise on that and get uh, more people down and out of the water. I mean, I think if we'd had a full year this year, it would have been you know, unbelievable. But I, I, I do think going forwards that um, it's going to be, you know, as long as we push it out there uh, via these sort of campaigns, I think uh, it's looking good for participation moving forward. I really do. I mean, I, I mean you know, Mark, I've been around for a long time, I've seen the ups and downs and everything else, but I do feel that there's been a momentum. There is a momentum, and I think that uh, I think the key important thing here is that it's about people working together to uh, it, 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 historically in the past people have sat in their silos doing their own thing and for me it's always been about how do we work together to uh, promote participation in fact but well, how do we promote participation actually that's the fundamental thing of this it's, it's not about me uh, you know I'm probably the wrong person to promote participation to the the, the, the next generation for me this whole thing is about young people like uh, Tim and inspiring people like Ailey there getting people on on the water so as uh, we said here, uh, as Dom said, this is about us providing a mechanism or supporting these people to promote the benefits of getting out of the water and what's available. Um, so I think it's, a, it's looking good, to be honest. Can I point that question also to Ellie? Because um, the reason Ellie's on the, the panel today is because um, she's been working with the Andrew Simpson Foundation on her PhD thesis for the last year or so, so right through the pandemic. And that thesis, I mean, you can explain more, but that thesis is sort of focused on the benefits of, and well-being benefits of um, outdoor activity and, and pursuits, so uh, particularly with a focus on sailing. Um, so, Ellie, I'd be really interested to know whether there's any sort of findings you've seen through that um, post-COVID. So my research is all about how being in the outdoor space, so blue space in particular, so being out on water is beneficial for health and well-being. And we know that that is the case already, but my thesis looks at particularly how coming out of lockdown, how children have essentially been not going to school, not doing their usual physical activities, how they've been locked inside, going back out onto the water, how that impacts their health and well-being. And from talking to children at the Portsmouth Centre, um, they expressed to me you know, how frustrating it was being in lockdown, not being able to do their, their usual sailing or windsurfing. And actually a lot of the children in Portsmouth could see the water from where they live um, and going back and, and doing their usual activity was, was hugely beneficial for their wellbeing. Um, and that is some of the, the um, results that my study have shown, is that going back to regular physical activity out on the water has had a positive impact on their health and wellbeing. Thank you very much. Um, Ross, you had some questions. Uh, yeah, just for one. Uh, really, um, obviously, getting more young people on board, so how, how, what's the target? How early are you trying to communicate to these kids? Are you going from primary or starting in secondary? It's a great question. Um, the prime audience for this is sort of the 11 to 18 year world market, um, so secondary school really. 
um, because then we can really help them nurture on that pathway to, to careers if, if that becomes what they're interested in. Um, clearly, if there are younger participants that want to get involved in the water, both Folk and Andrew Simpson Foundation are an open access uh, business, so we're not going to turn them away. But the, the sort of targeting of the initiative is, is on that sort of secondary market. Any other questions for anyone? Ooh. Go on. Uh, talk to Ellie. Um, with the gold medal in your pocket, what are your plans now with the Olympics only three years away? And are those plans with or without Hannah? Oh, that's a hard question to answer. <laughs> Can you just repeat the question? He, uh, he asked what my plans are going forward. Um, I can't tell with Hannah. Uh, the class is now mixed. I have to tell with the boy. So uh, if I had to go forward, I will be sailing with a, a male guy in the full 70. But to be honest, right now I'm so content with what I achieved, uh, not just with my gold medal, but with my performance and, and the athlete I was during that period that uh, I can't really think about it. I don't have the motivation and I I need to spend a bit of time doing some other things. To three, get three, years. <laughs> <laughs> three years makes it harder. <laughs> it would be lovely if it was four and I could have a nice chilled year for a bit, but I, I actually have to be back on it properly in January if I'm going to make it. Um, can I throw in a question as you've got the mic that way? Um, Tim, can we hear a little about what your plans are? Um, yes, so <laughs> I'm now obviously last year I sailed around Britain and that was really kick-started my career into the same world um, and really going forward I'm just following my dreams and my aim is to do the one thing though but that's what is going to um, remain as um, over the next two years I'm going to be getting into the single-handed offshore racing world um, with the potential of doing the mini transat in 2023. Um, so that's what I'm looking at and obviously working with the folk folk and the Andrew Simpson Foundation is going to be really important because it will mean that I can get younger people um, into the sport and I can be a role model and I can show people what an amazing sport this is and why we need to do it. So that's what plan is going for. Well, Mike, what was your question? My question was about Tim and Ailey actually. What what was the spark? What, what was it that got you into sailing? What, what started the journey? Well, I think for me, the first, the first thing that I remember about sailing was just coming over a hill and looking at the water and just see it's just a magical feeling that um, when you see the water, it's something different. You know, we live on land, but our lives are based on land, whereas um, seeing the water was just there was, some, there, was a, some, there was a magical spark, and then um, realizing that I could actually get out on the water and I could go and explore the world, and um, it just gave me a sense of sheer freedom, um, and that's that's what that's what ignited it. Um, so yeah, and with Ivy. Mine's a bit different. Mine's uh, <laughs> I, I've been on water my whole life, and uh, my love and desire has always been to go and win a gold medal. It's been an obsession forever. Um, my dad has an Olympic gold medal. He, he won in 1988 in Star Class. So I guess I really am a legacy child. <laughs> and uh, I, I've just obsessed over it my entire life. But I, I also really love just being out on water for my mental health and just taking the time, not racing, and, and getting the downtime out paddleboarding and winging and cruising occasionally. I just think it's the best place to be, to think, and let your thoughts wander. Perfect. Any other questions for anybody else we're here? Yes, go on. Tim, where are you going to race your campaign from? Oh, controversial. <laughs> well, unfortunately, there's this really annoying thing called school. I just started my A-levels, uh, my A-level course on Monday, um, and I'm already missing a day of school on Friday, which is not good for the new school. But, um, so I'd love to base it in France, because obviously France is the home of offshore racing, and um, it's to set your campaign up in France, you can get the most, you can get the most out of it. Um, unfortunately, I can't do that. So what I get, what my plan is, is to. Um, run the campaign in France in the summer and then bring the boat back to the UK in the winter and do work on the boat and do some training here and really focus on speed. Um, 
say that's that's the camera. It's worth mentioning that Tim is also nominated this evening for Young Yachting Journalist of the Year, Boating Journalist of the Year. Um, so for his blog from his round the UK trip uh, last year. Um, so he's if you know if sailing fails, you can come work with me. <laughs> Um, any other questions for anyone else? Not really a question, just a comment. Great plans. Thank you very much. We, we're, I mean, we're really excited about it. Obviously, it's really early days. We've announced our first participatory event, Sailing Experience Day, um, 10th October. We're taking um, bookings for that immediately. Um, so we'll be pushing that out now. Um, and I guess you know plans will just keep keep rolling from there. The aim is to have you know boat gen experience days and activity happening all over the country within the year, and um, and see where it takes us. I mean, you've got Lake Garda, maybe it'll be a global campaign soon. <laughs> Anything else from anyone else? Great. All right, well, we'll let you get off to your next event, but thank you so much for coming down. Thank you so much for all of our, our guests on the panel. Um, it's a pleasure to you know, have you here. And um, if you, anyone has any questions, then feel free to come and ask us separately or drop us a line. Thanks very much. <laughs>